Hello all, in this video we will see an introduction to deep learning. So um, if you look at the two figures on the board you can see that there are classical neural networks and also deep neural network. See deep learning essentially uses deep neural network. So uh, deep neural networks are nothing but uh, artificial neural networks with multiple hidden layers. So in the uh, figure for classical neural network that is classical ANN classical artificial neural network you can see that there is only one hidden layer exactly one hidden layer but when it comes to deep neural network uh, this, the, I mean the meaning from the meaning of the word deep itself everything is clear right that is the network is deeper meaning that it will have more than two or more than two hidden layers so in the first figure we have exactly one hidden layer but in the second figure we have n number of hidden layers in between so uh, when it has lots of hidden layers it can do very complicated tasks even neural networks can have thousands of hidden layers in between the input layer and output layer so as the number of hidden layers increases its representational power its problem solving capability everything increases so the question that is whether to choose normal ANN or uh, DNN actually this question, the answer to this question depends upon the task at hand. The reason is the deeper network tends to deliver better performance on more complicated tasks. So if you have a very complicated task at hand, you can use DNN otherwise you can go for ANN itself. Okay. And the widely used activation function when it comes to DNN is ReLU.
required for gradient is a 2 over. So this will work well with gradient descent. So this is actually the relief that we already knew. So the another uh, problem that we could face when we use value was see uh, then it is very large the output of value also is the same x value. So there could be a chance for the gradients to explode when the input value is like this x are really large. So what you can do is we will cap the value of um, this yeah, we will cap the value of the output of this function by a maximum threshold. That is when it reaches, it becomes saturated. That is f of x is equal to threshold when x greater than some value. Okay. That is f of x is equal to x when x is 0, x, uh, yeah, x 0 less than x less than threshold when f of x is equal to um, threshold uh, it does the maximum value we are setting some maximum value set 3 then f of x is equal to 0 when x is less than 0 so something like this so we are capping this function at this point so that the gradients will not explode so this is how we handle both vanishing gradient issue and see so this can handle the vanishing gradient issue this cap that is a leaky relief can handle vanishing gradient issue and this cap at this uh, point can handle exploding gradient issue too so relief application function can handle both vanishing and exploding gradient so we can use relief as the activation function here ok so um, relief is the activation function now we will see um, some uh, basic steps required for training in step is data preprocessing because data is the most important thing in case of any neural network because the quality of your output depends on the quality of your input data. So if your input data is really good, you can get quality output. Otherwise, uh, there is no clarity of the output. So the da data sometimes must be um, preprocessed also to get uh, output. For example, when it comes to some text data, we can avoid stop words like is, that, all such things. So some kind of data processing depending on your application must be done. So that is data preprocessing. Then another uh, step that we must take is mean subtraction. So for example, if your data on the axis, if your data were um, lying like this, okay, I mean the, the data points were uh, here, what you can do is you can subtract the mean from the data so that the data will be, uh, data will be zero centered like this. So the processing becomes very easy. So this is the original data and if you subtract the mean from every data point, your data will be mean centered, which is zero centered, which makes the calculations of the data very easy. So it is uh, very instrumental and uh, it is very um, instrumental in getting very quality results. So another thing is data normalization. So data normalization means you keep a fixed scale across different dimensions. That is for example, if it is uh, ratings, for a movie, you can keep the ratings between 0 to 5 by right? some kind of normalization. Okay, if the users are not uh, rating movies within the scale, you can normalize it within the scale. So, uh, one method of doing that is, uh, one method to do this is divide the data points by the standard, standard deviation of the data. So, that is data normalization. Another thing is parameter initialization. Uh, see, when it comes to parameter initialization, the parameters there are lots of parameters in a neural network, like uh, starting from the waves, biases, all such things, learning rate, so much things. So, um, if the waves are very small, you know that that will be the problem of vanishing gradient, and if the waves are really high. That could be the problem of exploding gradient. We have discussed both vanishing and exploding gradients in our previous video. So, um, yeah, that would be the problem of vanishing and exploding gradients. So, the parameter initialization must be done um, very well. It must be 
them very carefully. Even in case of learning rate, if the learning rate is very small, the system will be learning things very slowly. But if it is very high, the system will be very unstable. So you have to do uh, parameter initialization very carefully. Another thing that you need to do is batch normalization. Batch normalization. See in a dense network you can use different activation functions at different layers if you want. So the data and distribution may change from layer to layer. So um, instead of just doing the normalization in the initial layer, you may need to do normalizations for each batch, each layer. So that is batch normalization. That is since the data distribution changes in different la la layers, what you can do is you can, which will affect the stability of the network. So to increase the stability of the network, you have to pre-process and normalize the data by doing mean subtraction and other operations in between the layers for each batches also. So, so another thing is regularization. Um, see, we have distinguished about um, overfitting that is the uh, that is known and more in the networks perform excellently well during training and performs very bad during testing. So that is overfitting. Um, we have seen we have discussed overfitting in our previous video, so you should refer to that if you haven't seen that. So um, yeah, so um, in overfitting is it all when it comes to training the system to be excellent, but when it comes to uh, testing the system will not be doing much good. So that is overfitting. <coughs> so what happens is regularization helps to avoid overfitting by penalizing the base of the network. For example, one regularization function can be written as um, j of theta is equal to 1 by n into sigma i is equal to 0 to n. This is the loss function which we used to optimize the network. So loss function is definitely the difference between the actual value of y and the predicted value of y. Then we are including a regularization parameter say lambda. So lambda by q m into uh, theta are the weights. Okay. Theta are the weights. So what happens is uh, when the value of weights are very high, uh, theta will become very low. To uh, keep the weights, uh, keep the uh, total value, to total loss of the network at a minimum. So when the weights are really high, lambda will become very small. When lambda is very high, the base must be very low. So that is how the regularization parameter lambda keeps the weights very stable so that the loss uh, function, <coughs> the cost function of the network is always optimized. Okay. So we have uh, similarly we have dropout regularization also. So dropout is actually we uh, have this dropout also in detail in our previous video. So dropout is actually um, I mean, it is actually avoiding a subset of the network. For example, in that middle layer, in that uh, DNN, if we, are, uh, if we are avoiding the layers 1 and 3 from participating in the network, uh, in producing an output, uh, then some features, over importance given to some features can be avoided. So that is dropout. So a dropout parameter, finding a proper dropout parameter is also important. So that overfitting in the network will be um, handled. So uh, these are the um, things that you need to keep in mind when you train a network. Dropout is usually set in point nine. Okay. So regularization <coughs> is used to avoid the overfitting of the network. Uh, we are including a regularization parameter lambda so that it is sharing an inverse relationship with pay to keep this uh, uh, optimization of our weight function, uh, cost function at minimum. So when the weights are really high, the parameter lambda should be very small to keep it balanced. When it is very small, this should be high to keep it balanced. So that is how we uh, in, include a regularization parameter when we have dropouts also. So this is the process of uh, mm -hmm. keeping a part, a part of the network from uh, producing or predicting the output. So that the features which are learned at this level are not given that much importance. So we repeat it for different subset of the network uh, in each iteration of training. So that um, no uh, feature or no function.
functionality of non ligand will be overcome that so this is all about introduction to deep learning in the next video we will see uh, different optimization algorithms hope this is clear thank you